The Qinghai Tibet Railway. How was this railway built on top of the snow capped mountains? How did Chinese builders drill through the Kunlun Mountains step by step? 50 years, 30 billion, is it worth it? Someone once said that as long as there is Kunlun Mountain, the railway will never reach Lhasa. Although we now see this sentence like a joke, but this sentence in the past, it is an indisputable fact, to build a railway on the Kunlun Mountains is undoubtedly a full stream. But it is this project that is considered impossible by the world takes China 50 years to finally drive the train into Lhasa and lay the track on the top of the snow-capped mountain. How did China complete this impossible challenge? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Hot Topics Time, a channel to interpret news from a new perspective and explore the wisdom behind the news. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel, which is the encouragement that we can create more videos. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. The Qinghai Tibet Railway, with a total length of 1,956 kilometers, has a total of 85 stations, with an average altitude of more than 4,000 meters. It is the plateau railway with the highest altitude and the longest line in the world and was officially open to traffic on July 1, 2006. Speaking of the construction of the Qinghai Tibet Railway, we have to mention Mr. Sun Yat-sen. In fact, as early as 1918, Mr. Sun Yat-sen mentioned the construction of the Qinghai Tibet Railway in his strategy for national founding. Until 1956, the Ministry of Railways of China began to survey the line from Lanzhou to Lhasa. In September 1958, the first phase of the Qinghai Tibet Railway project Xining to Galmud started construction. Everyone should pay attention that in 1958, not long after the founding of the People's Republic of China, the domestic infrastructure was still in its infancy. There was no capital and no technology. It was very difficult to build such a railway that was rejected by the world. Only through some precious old films can we see the hardships of road construction in those years. The road construction workers only had a thin coat to protect themselves in the heavy snow. Due to the limitations of engineering technology and funding at that time, the railway construction project was not continuous, and it was not officially open to traffic until July 30, 1984. Although the first phase of the project is only 814 kilometers, it took 28 years to complete the construction. So, we can tell that building railways above 3,000 meters was really not easy at that time. The first stage, which is relatively simple, is so laborious. How should the second stage with higher altitude and longer lines be constructed? On June 20th, 29, 2001, 17 years after the completion of the first phase of the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the second phase of the 1,142-kilometer project from Galmud to Lhasa was officially started. Galmud is an important demarcation point for entering Tibet. If you go south from Galmud, you must first enter the Kunlun Mountains. As we all know, Kunlun Mountain, also known as the Mountain of 10,000 Ancestors, is the most famous sacred mountain in China. The most notable feature of the Kunlun Mountains is that they are high, with an altitude of more than 4,000 meters. The oxygen content here is only 50% of that in the plains. The lowest temperature can reach minus 30 degrees Celsius, and the living conditions are extremely harsh. But this is the only place to enter Tibet, and it is also a battle that the road builders focus their efforts on. Here, a 1,686-meter-long Kunlun mountain tunnel is to be built, that is to say, the Kunlun mountain must be cut through. The Kunlun mountain tunnel is destined to become the longest plateau permafrost tunnel in the world. Although the tunnel has only two waterproof layers, one insulation layer and one concrete layer, the construction is extremely difficult. However, compared to the altitude of 4,648 meters above sea level, construction difficulty is not the most important problem. 
Anyone who has been to the plateau knows that when the human body enters a plateau above 3,000 meters above sea level and is exposed to a low pressure and low oxygen environment, various discomforts may occur, which are collectively referred to as altitude sickness. Among them, high-altitude pulmonary edema and high-altitude cerebral edema are the most dangerous and even fatal. It is very difficult for ordinary people to live in such a high latitude, and construction workers have to do heavy physical labor here. The road construction workers at that time needed to carry 5 kilograms of oxygen cylinders on their backs, inhaling oxygen while working. They were actually building railways with their lives. Do you think this is the most dangerous construction site in the world? At that time, in order to ensure the safety of road construction workers, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber was built at the Kunlun Mountain Pass. If the workers showed signs of acute altitude sickness, they were immediately carried into the hyperbaric chamber for treatment. The number of people who were carried into the hyperbaric oxygen chamber at the Kunlun Mountain Pass was innumerable and it was precisely because of it that none of the 140,000 construction team died of acute mountain sickness. After the Kunlun Mountain Pass, there is a 550-kilometer-long tundra, which is also the most dangerous enemy for building the Qinghai-Tibet Railway. Building a railway on permafrost is a worldwide problem. Frozen soil freezes and expands in winter, and when it melts in summer, it turns into thin mud and the roadbed of the railway will be damaged. Therefore, keeping the permafrost from thawing is a key point in the construction of the Qinghai-Tibet Railway. Chinese experts have proposed many creative railway construction plans. The first is the cooling of rock subgrade plan. After numerous experiments, it was determined that stone fragments with a size of 22 cm have the best cooling effect on frozen soil. This porous block stone roadbed can effectively protect the permafrost and can discharge heat from the roadbed in winter and absorb less heat in summer, similar to a thermal semiconductor. The second is the Ventilation Pipeline Foundation. This circular cement pipe channel not only plays a role in cooling, but also resists the cracking of the foundation caused by the continuous elevation of the Qinghai Tibet Highlands. Finally, there is the hot rod cooling method. A hot rod is filled with liquid ammonia. After the liquid ammonia absorbs the heat of the soil, the ammonia turns into a gas and rises. When the cold air meets the cold air at the top of the hot rod, the heat can be taken away through the heat sink, and the ammonia is recondensed. The liquid flows back to the bottom of the rod, and the cycle is reciprocating. If they encounter a very unstable permafrost layer, they can only use the method of building bridges. The bridge foundation was deeply driven into the underground permafrost to build a bridge that would never sink. Through these means, the permafrost problem along the railway was completely solved. The railway continues to move forward, and it enters the Dongxiong grassland. Next to the Dongxiong is one of the three holy lakes in Tibet, Namso Lake. On the vast grassland, wild yaks, yellow sheep and other animals often come and go, in order to stay away from the surrounding animal reserves, the railway detours for more than 30 kilometers, and more than 300 million yuan is invested to avoid these places. Although passengers cannot enjoy the beautiful lake view on the train, in order to maintain the fragile ecological environment of the plateau, this is something that human beings must do. When the car passed through the Dangshan grassland, it entered the northern gate of Lhasa. After that, the railway traveled along the valley and could go straight to Lhasa, the top of the mountains and the source of all waters. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below and share your insightful ideas with other people. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.